Aaron McMillan and I are both the founders of a quadratic, uh, quadratic funding protocol. As Oren founded CLR Fund, I founded Gitcoin. We've been friends before we were founders of that project. And we were talking about how inspired we were uh, of the ethos of client diversity that has come out of Prismatic Labs and other teams at the base layer and how that Anyway, so uh, we were talking about what it would mean to have practical pluralism at the public goods funding layer of the stack. And so I've assembled some of the top founders of public goods funders in this space to talk about practical pluralism. So I'll hand it off to you, Oren. So I'm just going to read a quick uh, excerpt from the article that we wrote or the, the essay that we wrote. It's up uh, on this QR code if you want to go and check it out later because I won't read the whole thing because we don't have time. Uh, but here we go. So pluralism itself is a primitive for anti-fragile, resilient, and regenerative systems. Uh, as an ecosystem, Ethereum has done a great job of fostering diversity in its mining and validating clients. Uh, similarly, we should insist on pluralism across the full stack of Web3 technologies uh, and uh, culture. So this includes discrete products like wallets, RPC nodes, DAO tooling, public goods funding mechanisms, AMMs, stable coins, uh, developer tooling, uh, as well as the uh, intangible influencers like the people, groups, communities, uh, and opinions which participate in and hold sway over our ecosystem. So we, we're all here today because we believe in client diversity. We believe in pluralism as a primitive, and we want to join, uh, we want you guys to join us in kind of extending this ethos of client diversity and pluralism to other layers of our collective stack. Uh, so by having pluralism, as a core value in each kind of vertical, we make it more likely that the space tends towards capture resistance uh, and uh, not fragility. Participants should be able to choose uh, or to use or not use any of a number of options uh, for any given need. And so by having pluralism at the kind of beating heart of each niche, we ensure the space is anti-fragile. Uh, if there's a major bug discovered in one system, the resulting cascading harm can only go so far because there's always another uh, alternative system to pick up the slack. So for Web3 to truly express itself, diversity and pluralism must be a core value. Uh, I'm going to hand it off to Griff to say a little piece on this as well. Yeah, and I think we need to make sure that we're watching for opportunities for pluralism. I'm really worried, I, I want to make two points. I'm really worried, number one, about Etherscan. I think it's the hidden centralization that we don't. It, Matt, Matthew Tan and the Etherscan team are amazing and they do great work, but that is the biggest honeypot in our industry and we don't even think about it. If you can hack Etherscan and say you sent a million dollars somewhere, you sent a million dollars somewhere. We, we really need to make sure that we're funding alternatives like Block Scout, and I'm really worried about Block Scout since Gnosis just added Gnosis Scan and Etherscan on that chain, and now where's Block Scout gonna go? We really need to think about blockchain explorers. I also just wanna say, uh, pluralism goes, if we have this infrastructure at our base layer, we can extend pluralism to the world. We have monopolistic governments telling us what to do all the time and demanding monopoly over public goods. And if we could instead change it so that we have competing organizations that are trying to meet the demand of society to satisfy our public goods needs, we'll have a much better world. And this will only work on top of a, a practical plurality base layer. Hey, um, so I'm Carl. I'm contributing to the Optimism Collective, a layer two. And we had practical pluralism in two spots. One, inside of our protocol. We started out building a monolith, but it was rigid, hard to contribute to, and bug prone. We needed a multi-client ecosystem in our ecosystem. So we took a step back, we split it up, broke it into modules, and then now we're actually building towards this multi-client ecosystem and have multiple clients for layer two. So that's practical pluralism at work allowing us to scale our protocol. And this is just amazing, an amazing moment of practical pluralism on stage here today. We spent so much time focusing on brands, but I am a believer that there is something which is forward progress, and that is why information and open source is so incredible, because you can actually make forward progress for an ecosystem. It's not about you getting forward, it's about moving the ecosystem forward as a whole. So that's it. Wow. That was great. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Pia Mancini, co-founder and CEO of Open Collective. 
we are not a Web3 project, so sorry about that. But what we do <laughs> is we fund a lot of open source projects. We currently support 3,000 open source projects. We do project direct directed funding. And the way we do it is by creating an umbrella organization that allows them to access funding from companies and individuals and foundations that otherwise they wouldn't be able to access. And so our approach to pluralism is really by enabling any open source project out there to be able to receive funding. They don't need to be big, they don't need to be fancy, they just need to be an open collective. And in the past four years, we've distributed $30 million sorry, in public directed funding. So that's what we do. Great. <laughs> okay, my name is Abby. I'm the head of community and governance at Radical. We build decentralized collaboration tools for developers building decentralized technologies. If you see me talk, I love free and open soft software. I am a FOSS fanatic, and I believe that practical plur pluralism, that's a tongue twister, can save the internet. The internet is being captured by anti-competitive forces um, that censor and capture and continue to extract. And if we don't build against this by investing in technical plurality, giving people the ability to exit infrastructure to freely act on their protocols and their infrastructure instead of uh, relying on platforms to gatekeep their experience, if we can do that, if we can um, be more plural in the way that we um, build together, um, if uh, by ownership distributions, um, Radical and Gitcoin just did an awesome public goods alliance, we did a token swap. If you can uh, embed pluralism in your ownership, that's another way of securing resilience. And then finally, if you can build pluralism in your participants and the people in your network by building super diverse multi-stakeholder governance, you can build practical pluralism across the stack um, and build a better internet for everybody. That's what I think is great. I think that was one minute, right? <laughs> Hey everyone, um, my name is Trent Van Epps. Uh, it's an, first, it's an honor to be with these people, so many of whom I respect. Um, I'm a member of the Protocol Guild, which is rebalancing the incentives to contribute to the core protocol, making sure we have people maintaining this infrastructure that uh, the entire ecosystem depends on and that the people that are working on it are uh, properly compensated and motivated to continue doing this work for many, many decades to come. Um, and I would like to point everybody to a, a great talk yesterday from Josh Stark of the EF. He um, included many of the organizations represented here on this slide. Uh, I encourage you to go check it out. It's about the EF generally, but um, uh, he, he references or compares uh, organizations fundraising for public goods as Ethereum's civil society. And um, it's a really apt analogy because um, we don't have a government in Ethereum. We have the private sector, which is people that are, you know, building tools and applications for people to use, uh, maybe profit motiv motivated, but we desperately need to maintain the civil society that is making sure that the public goods of Ethereum are maintained and that uh, people can get the resources to build them long into the future. Um, so I'd encourage you to check out that talk and imagine uh, this, this group of people here as you know the vanguard of civil society in Ethereum and it's something that we need to uh, make sure is uh, encouraged to, we, we should be able to um, contribute to the civil society as well um, while having these organizations building alongside of each other. Um, yeah, go check out that talk. Alrighty, I'll bring it home. Uh, so I, Kevin Iwaki, founder of Gitcoin, repent for building a centralized monolith in the beginning. And I'm really glad to be seeing Gitcoin move towards a decentralized modular infrastructure and I think that that modular infrastructure is going to enable Gitcoin to be more plural in the future. Um, and I would love to, I'm not in control of the DAO in any way, but uh, as an outsider, I would love to see a future in which uh, we build on top of the modules that uh, CLR Fund has pioneered, that Giveth has pioneered, retroactive public goods funding at Optimism. Open Collective has been an inspiration for me from the start. Radical, same thing, and I'm really proud of what Protocol Guild is doing with public goods funding for the client developers in the Ethereum ecosystem. I really hope to see, uh, to give another talk on practical pluralism in a couple years and invite, uh, we're going to have to figure out how to put 20 founders up on stage of public goods projects in 2025. And um, I think that we want to eat our own dog food and be practically plural with the public goods funding infrastructure of the ecosystem. And uh, this is a challenge to the rest of the ecosystem, whether you're building NFT marketplaces, DEXs, or any other piece of infrastructure to embrace modularity and pluralism from the start. And uh, I'm so inspired by you. Thank you for joining this panel. And please uh, join me in a round of applause for our panelists. 
right, right on time. There we go. Thanks, everyone. See you in the in the lobby.